Now, I'll be honest with you, I'm really not a big fan of iPhone wallet cases, but for the last few months, I decided to challenge myself with using wallet cases again to see if the latest iteration of the products have gotten any better. Now, why was I annoyed with some of the wallet cases I used in the past? Because they're usually too big or not big enough to hold anything. Sometimes they're a little unwieldy. Sometimes they're a little boring or not boring enough. And honestly, some are just so bad. For me, this entire process would be similar to me trying to like something that I don't like eating, you know, and eating it for months on end, you know, stuff like Brussels sprouts. Now, has my opinion of wallet cases changed over the last uh, few months? Um, a little bit. This one's pretty nice, but which one is the best? Well, stay tuned. So here's a too long didn't watch summary. Out of all these cases, my go-to iPhone wallet case is going to be the most limitless version two wallet cover. There are several features on this case that really set it apart in my opinion. If you need something larger, the Berkley bifold magnetic case is probably going to be your best bet. It holds so much stuff. Now, if you need a simple leather cover that might carry a couple of cards, the Notice Access case or Nomad Rugged Folio would be my top picks. And for those who just couldn't be bothered with covers on their devices or just need to carry a couple of cards for those crazy nights out at the local tavern, well, the Venna V Commute is probably your best bet. The one product that kind of makes me cringe, well, the Apple Leather Folio, but not for the reasons that you think. Now, if you need alternatives to all these products, do keep watching. I constantly update my top 10 list on my website, so depending on when you're watching this, uh, do check out my site for the most up-to-date list. So in the next few minutes, I'm gonna show you cases based on my ranking system for every product I review. I figure out how bulky the product is in relation to the iPhone, rank them based on materials, fit, as well as the texture of the product. When it comes to protection ranking, I will take note of how well it performs during drops, as well as how much screen protection the product offers. And when it comes to accessing your iPhone, I figure out if the product allows you to actually use your camera with it, the, the buttons, if it handles well in one hand, and how well does it work with Qi charging. And with wallet cases, the most importantly is how many cards and cash can it hold. My reviews are based on real usage, so if you're looking for fluff pieces where the photos are just ripped from Amazon, well, sorry. Now for this next section, I'm gonna show you cases that are better than this $3 leather case, leather case that I bought from uh, AliExpress. This is the baseline, which is a little crazy because from afar, this case looks almost as good as this $100 one. First up is the Mouse Limitless version 2 with the wallet cover. The pros is that the removable case is extremely tough. There is a band of elastic for cash and there's a card slot on the back of the case. When it comes to cons, I can't really think of any. Honestly, when it comes to iPhone cases, there aren't many products that can take a hit like the Mouse Limitless version 2. Their cases are one of the very few products that I feel comfortable dropping a ton of iPhones and as you can see when it comes to the wallet accessory the standout feature for me is the card slot on the back being able to easily access my most frequently used card without having to open the wallet is incredibly handy if you're using a chip card being able to flash your wallet without opening it is also very handy it may seem like a simple thing but that extra slot on the back makes a big difference in terms of everyday use from my perspective when it comes to this product most design the case first and then fit the wallet accessory around it every other product seemingly from my perspective built the iPhone case around the wallet so it's just not as slick. Muscle's magnetic mounting system allows you to change the functionality of the case by allowing you to mount it on walls, in your car, or if you don't need the extra wallet capacity, you can add the slim card holder onto the back. The wallet cover is made out of real leather, I'll add, and this wallet cover has been in my circulation for the last six months and it's done fairly well. Now all these things add up in a really big way if you're willing to invest into the accessories with the most limitless. No other wallet case in this video has this sort of flexibility and at the end of the day, shouldn't that be the point of a good iPhone accessory? Onto the Berkley Magnetic Leather Case. Now the pro for this product is there's real leather. There's a lot of real leather in this case. There's a removable case. There's a higher than average card capacity. And there's a cutout for the front facing speaker if you decide to take calls. Now the cons with this product is that the bottom is, well, a little too sharp for my liking. I'll elaborate in a second. Now I really never had an appreciation for real leather products until I bought a pair of real leather shoes. Apparently in my slightly older age, my appreciation for nicer things has changed. I don't know. Uh, regardless, this Berkeley leather case looks awesome. <laughs> smells awesome and feels incredibly awesome. Oh, and it works very, very well. When it comes to a leather wallet case for your iPhone, nothing really beats this Berkeley case because there's just leather everywhere. The portion under the iPhone, which most people won't see, is still leather, whereas in the other products we use other materials. The iPhone in the case actually sits on leather as well, which is pretty neat. 
awesome, actually. This four card one pocket case has a larger magnetic flap on the front, which means you can stuff a little bit more into this product than other ones. The case is easily removable and doesn't get in the way of Qi charging, though you can't use the Qi charging with the whole wallet. The case itself is fairly light and won't offer much protection uh, in terms of dropping it. Your occasional drop from waist height won't be an issue, but it won't come close to the protection that the Mouse Limitless version 2 will offer. My only complaint with this case is the cutouts at the bottom are a little sharp, which is noticeable when you use the case in one hand. Now, when it comes to real leather products, the more you use them, the more unique they look. It's the same story with the Berkeley Magnetic Leather Wallet case. I've been using this case on and off for the last few weeks, and I love how the patina is developing on this product. Number three in this category goes to the Zover Magnetic Detachable Leather Case. The pros is, well, well like the previous two cases, it's made from real leather. There's a SIM card expansion, it's magnetic mount compatible, and it's very slim. When it comes to con, the actual case I think is just too thin, and it doesn't have the same storage capacity as other products. Now it may look like a regular wallet case, but the Zover detachable leather wallet case has a lot of little extra to push it above the average wallet case. Leather is soft to touch and has been wearing quite well during my review period, though there isn't as much leather when compared to, say, the Berkeley case. The leather used by Zover also isn't as thick, and between the two products, the Zover case is lighter by about 20 grams. The sound features for this product for me are actually found on the removable case. The Zover case includes a section for an extra SIM card, so with the 10s Max, you can physically keep two SIM cards on you at any given time. The case has a cutout for a magnetic mounting area, which is handy as well, uh, though you have to choose between magnetic car mounting or Qi charging. The magnets will interfere with Qi charging if you decide to use magnetic car mounting, but lucky for us, it's easily removable. Now, I do wish that the case that Zover used could be a bit thicker. It honestly doesn't feel like it could take more than a one meter drop, which from my perspective, you know, is kind of the bare minimum in terms of drop protection. And this is something to consider in the off chance that the wallet flips open in a forceful manner and your iPhone comes flying out. Now the other downside of the Zover case is that its latching system isn't as forgiving as the average latch system. I do appreciate Zover's attempt to keep everything slim, but the moment you add more than three cards and some cash, the latch isn't going to close. If you think the latch not closing isn't really a big deal, how many extraneous receipts do you have right now in your current wallet? Because a wafer thin receipt might actually result in the wallet case exploding everywhere. Well, maybe not everywhere, but it definitely will get annoying after a while. Number four goes to the 12th South Book book. Now, when it comes to pros, is that it looks like, well, the Bible? It looks like a book. It's made from real leather, and the case is kind of removable. When it comes to cons, it's bulky and there's no latch. Now, what's the first thing that comes to mind when I say iPhone leather wallet case for me? It's, well, the 12 South book book. I've been using a book book since the iPhone 4s. The newer versions have a couple of new features that set it apart from the average leather wallet case. The most obvious one is that it looks like a book sometimes. Some people have said in previous videos that it looks like the Bible. Now, some people are going to like it. Some people are not. Um, I like it. Actually, my wife does not. The book book that I have has the same finish as the Berkeley case, which I like as it shows the patina better than the Zover case. Now, from what I can tell, the leather used in the book book is thicker than the Zover case, which I equate to better quality. The wallet can hold four cards and has a pocket for cash, which is one card above average from my perspective. When it comes to the case, unlike the first three products, it doesn't come out easily. In fact, I don't think it's supposed to come out easily at all. 12 Self decided to go with a slightly more complicated method of sliding latches to enable the kickstand mode. Now, if you fiddle the case around enough, you'll be able to remove it from the leather wallet portion, and that might be handy once in a while. I will note that removing your iPhone from the case is a little tougher than usual as evidenced by my snapping of the case. With the sliding design feature, I was really hoping that this wallet case would be compatible with Qi charging, but the Belkin charger that Apple sells in the store didn't have enough range to charge the device in the wallet cover. The last downside from my perspective is that there is no latch to keep your wallet together, so in the event of a drop, your screen might be exposed to whatever your iPhone to screen decides to make out with. The last wallet in this category is the Silk Smart-ish Keeper of Things. Pros is that, well, this is a stupidly cheap wallet case. Comes with a wallet strap, has a different kind of latch. Cons is that it's cheap and it's not real leather. If you're looking for a budget wallet case, the Keeper of Things isn't a bad choice. In fact, it's probably your best choice. The feature that puts it above the usual wallet case is actually the unique latching system. Silk Smartish decided to use an elastic to keep everything together rather than a button or magnetic latch. This helps keep the case slim while providing you with the ability to really overstuff the wallet. Now, Silk was really active a couple years ago, but last I checked, none of the products were on Amazon anymore. So if you don't find it through Amazon, through my links, do check out their site. Now, one of the things I tried to do for this video was to find discount codes for all the products that I've shown, although all the recommended products. So if you look all the way down to the bottom of this video, I'm going to pin the very first comment and I'm going to put all the discount codes for all my recommended products there or the ones that I could find. 
can find. So if any of the products are appealing to you, do you use those codes? Now the next few cases I'm gonna show you will literally merge your wallet and your iPhone together and be warned, these cases are not small, but what were you expecting? best one in this category is the Berkley Bifold Leather Case. The pros is that it has a massive storage capacity. The cons is that, well, with that massive storage capacity, it's kind of big. Now, I've already covered the Berkley case in detail a few minutes ago, so everything I've said about that case also goes for the Bifold case, except for the capacity. This is a massive wallet, and it actually rivals my wife's clutch. So if you need to store everything in your life with your iPhone and still be able to use your iPhone like a normal person would, well, get this case. Next up is the Nomad Trifolio. The pros of this case is that it has a great handling case and that there's a unique design about this entire product. The cons is that it's a little awkward to use. Now, I'm a big fan of Nomad products. This is actually the first time I've used a Nomad product as an iPhone case reviewer, and I'm actually quite impressed. The Trifolio is a little different when it comes to wallet cases, as there are a lot of flaps on the case. The four card two slot capacity may not seem like much more than the average wallet case, but it's the design of the case that allows you to really stick more stuff into this case. Uh, as a down Downside, it does make the iPhone a little more awkward to use. Now, Nomad uses Horween leather, which is leather made by one of the oldest tanneries in the US, which is kind of neat since 1903. The leather has a nice thickness to it and wears quite well. Nomad pairs the leather exteriors with a microfiber interior, which kind of works well in my opinion because it keeps the covers actually relatively thin. There's no latch on this case, so you don't have to worry about not being able to close your wallet case if you overstuff it. Now, this is a downside when it comes to screen protection, but that's kind of a compromise that you'll have to make with this, uh, with the Trifolio. One of the things I really do like about the Nomad case is the finish that they use on the TPU of their cases. It handles really well for TPU, and the texture actually has a higher quality feel than other cases. The last thing I will mention is that the Nomad Trifolio is one of the few cases that allows you to access your iPhone's camera easily without really having to pull on the wallet to get it out of the way. The average leather folio case does not allow you to do that. The last case in this category is the Yolo Folio, and pros, it's decently priced. There's a unique texture to the entire product. Cons is that it won't last as long as the leather case and the removal case, in my opinion, isn't as tough as other cases. If you've been watching my channel for the last few years, you'll know that the Yolo Folio was one of my favorites. Why? Because it was one of the very first cases to introduce the removable case, and that feature was kind of game-changing in my opinion. Uh, fast forward to now, and everybody seems to have that baked into their products. The standout feature, from my perspective, is actually the price. It allows you to have a removable case while having a high-capacity wallet at the same time. The case isn't made from real leather, but from PU leather, which is technically fake leather, but the texture of the PU leather is quite nice. This is one of the best handling wallet cases on this list because of that texture. The inside of the wallet is also covered in microfiber, which also helps keep your ice screen clean. When it comes to the actual case, I would say it's not as protective as the other products in this video uh, that have removable cases, the top and bottom of your iPhone is exposed a bit. So, you know, a bad face first drop in the Yolo Folio case might have a higher chance of a broken screen, I'll say. Now, I have found from my long-term uses test that the PU leather uh, on the Yolo Folio will start fraying after a few months. If you drop it a bunch of times, the leather's gonna start coming off. Uh, the long-term test unit that I have out in the wild is constantly being mauled by toddlers. So, you know, you take that into a Take that into account. Now let's talk about simple leather covers. So the Notice Access Case 3, well, pros is that it's thin, comes with suction cups, has a very large pocket on the front. The cons are that it's not as tough as the other wallet cases and there's no latch. Now, yes, I did say suction cups and iPhones. Now these two things usually don't go together, but Notice does make it work. The benefit of the micro suction technology that Notice uses is that it eliminates the need for the iPhone to actually sit in a case. This does expose more of your iPhone, but it also means that you get a cleaner look. If you're not terribly clumsy with your devices and are looking for a sleek looking folio cover, you honestly can't go wrong with the Notice Access case. Now, technically the large pocket on the inside of the cover can hold up to three cards and some cash, but with the Notice Access case, you're not forced to leave empty card slots if you don't want to use three cards. For these simpler leather covers, I personally prefer to have one credit card and some cash, which means the large pocket on the Notice Access case works very well for me. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm pretty torn when it comes to simple leather covers between the Notice Access case and this next case. 
the Nomad Rugged Folio is a great case. It wears well, has a decent capacity, and the cons is that, well, it has no latch. Now, when it comes to a simple cover, the Nomad Rugged Folio does a good job. Again, I love how the whole ring leather is wearing on the case, and the finish on the TPU is just awesome. But some of you might consider this as a larger wallet case, but the thinner feel of the microfiber inside keeps the cover slim enough, uh, even though it has room for three cards in cash. The lack of a latch does make this a difficult product to fully utilize the three cards in cash, but if you only need something for a bus pass or a couple of business cards, it's hard to beat the Nomad Rugged Folio. Next up is the Apple Leather Folio. The pros is that, well, it's an Apple product. It's made from real leather, like most place, most of these products are in this video. The flap works well, and the cons is that, well, it's just so bleeping expensive. So the leather Apple Folio, honestly, is one of the most expensive pieces of Apple branded gear I've ever bought. After tax, this thing cost me close to $200, uh, which is just, I, I'm gonna say, a slap in the face. Now, personally, I don't have a problem paying an arm and a leg uh, for Apple hardware. In my opinion, it's just generally better. Nobody does, honestly, hardware better. Some will come close, many will copy <coughs> Samsung. But when it comes for setting the trend for hardware, I think Apple's got it all figured out. However, when it comes to accessories, I think that's a completely different story. Like WTF, why is a nylon watch strap 80 freaking dollars? Why is a stainless steel mesh band $300? And why is this blue leather case 200 freaking dollars? As much as Apple innovates their hardware offerings, their uh, accessories are just like <laughs> There's such a disjoint between the price of the products, the stupid thing, and the actual functionality. The functionality of this leather portfolio case by Apple doesn't even come close to the Berkeley case. And this is about 150 bucks. This is 200. I can get four YOLO cases for the price of this leather folio and I get so much more usage out of it. So much more functionality of my device in that product when compared to this is it a status thing? I really hope not because, you know, getting an iPhone itself is almost a status thing because it's just so bloody expensive. Their prices for their products are just crazy for the hardware products. Now, if you're going to cover it with a really crappy uh, product, is that a status thing? Like, why would you sacrifice $200 for something that allows you to carry one card and maybe some cash? As you can tell, I am mildly annoyed at this entire thing. I'm mildly annoyed at paying $200 for this thing. The Apple Store salesperson or specialist or whatever the hell we're supposed to call them now, they asked me twice, do you really want to buy this? And then they said, you've got 14 days to return it. And this was about five weeks ago, so I'm not returning it. So I'm stuck with this $200 paperweight. But here's the funny thing. I asked my wife which wallet case out of all the ones that I've reviewed in this video, and the one that she picked was the Apple leather case. Why? because it's the softest. So if you need a soft feeling case that can carry one card and some cash, go buy something else. Don't buy this. This is ridiculous. $200, such a rip off. My two cents anyways. You gonna drink that? It's pretty good. If you're finding this video useful, consider getting all your wallet cases through my links or through you or using the codes that I'm providing you. This video is unsponsored, so I get to say whatever I want, but it still takes up a lot of my time, so any support is, well, I'll be grateful for it. And I'll also stop eating Brussels sprouts. Next up, we're gonna talk about the on-to-go wallets for those who love to go to taverns. The best one in this category is the Vera V Commute. Why? Because, well, the design is smart, the design is useful. The downside is that it's kind of bulky and it's definitely not compatible with G charging. The V Commute is basically an iPad smart cover on the back of a wallet case. It's that smart. Instead of having a clunky cover or exposing your cards all the time, the V Commute hides your cards with the magnetic flap, which doubles as a stand for your iPhone. And the smart cover actually allows you to mount your iPhone to a magnetic car mount, which is pretty sweet. In the world of iPhone accessories, it's not very often that I come across a product that I'm actually very surprised with. The V Commute is one of those products. My only gripe about this case is that it is bulky. Like any three card non-folio style wallet case, the extra bulk on the back of the case is gonna make your iPhone quite unwieldy, I would say. And the extra bulk on the back ensures that Qi charging is out of the question. Next up in this category is the Ghost Tech Exec 3. The pros is that it has a unique 
design and it actually works with Qi charging. The cons is that, well, it looks kind of funny. Now the Exec 3 is an odd looking case. I do have to give kudos to Ghost Tech for taking a gamble with the Exec 3 and instead of having the wallet on the back like the Exec 2, they moved it to the front. So now it offers protection for 60% of your screen, but unlike the V Commute, you can actually use it with Qi charging if that's you know your deal. Now the cover also exposes the clock on the lock screen. So unlike other leather folio cases, you could be a little sneakier when looking at the time. The front cover can hold three cases. The cover feels like it's made from fabric rather than leather, which is a nice change from all the leather cases on this list. I realized while making this video that I really appreciate good quality leather, but products that kind of use cheaper leather or small amounts of leather in an attempt to be a little fancier is very tiring to me. Now, speaking of leather cases, we're going to talk about the Mujo leather wallet case. Some of the pros include, well, quality leather. It's This is just a simple no fuss case. One of the cons is that it exposes your iPhone a bit more. Now, when it comes to simple cases, the Mujo leather wallet is just literally as simple as it gets. The case is covered in full green leather and the sleeve can hold theoretically two to three cards, but I've been using it with just one as the fussing around with trying to split multiple cards in the sleeve just became tedious for me. I wish I could say more about this product, but it's a simple, well-made product that gets the job done. So, you know, if you need to carry one or two cards with your iPhone, get this case. There are two drawbacks though. The edges of the case are quite low, so definitely get a screen protector with this uh, product. And the bottom edge of the iPhone is completely exposed, so don't drop it there. Next up is the Poetic Nubuck case. Uh, the pros is that, well, it's cheap. Uh, there's a great finish and it's just simple. The cons is that I don't think it's gonna offer the iPhone a lot of protection. When it comes to on-to-go cases, the Poetic Nubuck case is really hard to beat. Why? Because it's cheap and because the back has cloth and leather and that just that combination works very well. It's almost like terry cloth. The cloth back offers a different feel than your typical case and I found myself kind of fondling the case uh, more than I should. My only complaint is that the case won't offer your iPhone much protection. The edges of the case are so low that it's actually my screen protector that will sit on a flat surface rather than the edge of the case. I would also be very wary about dropping my iPhone uh, with this case because anything higher than waist height I think is going to be brutal for your iPhone we'll say. But honestly this case is 13 bucks so you know it carries a case feels great looks cool what more can you ask now has my opinion of wallet iphone cases really changed they really it has a little bit i'm glad that i focus more on you know higher quality uh, products this time around rather than some of the cheaper ones in some of the videos that i've done over the last few years i do like the leather for some odd reason i'm drawn more towards actual leather like this vegan tanned leather from this Notice Axis case just smells awesome and it feels pretty great. Now, my biggest problem I think in general with wallet cases is that I personally cannot get rid of all my cards for whatever reason. I've got cards for, you know, day-to-day -day usage, I've got cards for my family usage, and I've got cards for my business. And so not all of the banks that I bank with allow me to use Apple Pay or be able to put onto my devices. So I've kind of st I'm kind of stuck in this tough place when it comes to wallet cases because the one that I generally use the most is actually going to be the Berkeley case, which is the biggest one because it holds all my cards, which is kind of silly. So that's all I got. Questions, comments, leave them down there. If there's a specific line of products that you want me to take a closer look at, do let me know and I'll see about contacting the uh, manufacturer and getting just a whole wide breadth of their products and just doing a big roundup for them. Um, some of these leather case manufacturers have other products like cases for the AirPods or just general wallets or just some other things that might be of interest to you guys. So do let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.